The next concept that we really need to go into for this particular lab, and it's kind of a change of direction, is molar mass and molarity. How this is particularly important is when you look at molar mass and molarity, this is going to give you an idea, or not an idea, it's going to tell you exactly how much of a substance you're putting into an amount of water. And so you, the basic, the first thing you need to know is you need to be aware of the terminology. So one of the common units that we use is the mole. And when I say the mole, I don't mean like, you know, the dun 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 mole, you know, that kind of thing, or the garden, you know, I don't know if that's a mole or not, but, you know, I don't often see moles. So, or this kind of mole, you know, whatever that kind of mole. It's not one of those either. A mole in chemistry is a quantity. You can have a mole of anything. I can have a mole of business cards. I can have a mole of fancy schmancy sunglasses. I can have a mole of, what is this, a postcard from the Cushing Center at Yale. Um, <coughs> you can have a mole of anything. How this, is, how this is particularly important is whenever we start looking at atoms, whenever we start looking at molecules and putting things together, the one atom of anything is so unbelievably small that counting one of them is just not a realistic expectation. So when we look at the periodic table, it gives us masses. The mass that it gives us is for one mole of that substance. Now, a lot of people, they say, oh, okay, it's a mole. And then you say, okay, how big is a mole? And they're like, well, it's about that big. <coughs> the problem is you can't really give an idea of a mole unless you have an idea of how big a mole actually is. One mole is the equivalent to, get my pen on here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of something. That means that you have 6, 0, 2, 2, with 20 zeros after it, that many of a substance. I just want to give you an idea of how big that is. If you were to take every grain of sand on Earth and count it, you wouldn't have this many. If you were to, you know, a lot of people, especially in this particular area, because I'm about an hour north of New York City, um, they're big Yankees fans. And whether you're a Yankees fan or, you know, a Red Sox fan or whatever other team that exists, I don't know. But it doesn't matter which team you are. When you go to the, when you go to the, uh, to the baseball stadium, they have those turnstiles. If you were to take this number of people going through one of those turnstiles and one person going through every second... Well, it couldn't happen because that amount of time has not passed in the existence of the planet yet. That's how long it is. That's how big of a number a mole is. So whenever we talk about a mole of oxygen or a mole of helium or a mole of hydrogen, have some respect for how big the quantity actually is. For example, if I were to have a mole of fancy schmancy sunglasses, then I would the mass of those sunglasses would be more than the Earth itself. It's a massive, massive number of something. So now that you got that, you can use that number to figure out exactly how many particles are in something, but I just want you to have an idea of what it is. So one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of something. Doesn't matter what it is. But it's commonly used in chemistry, and it's a quantity of something. So how particularly, get rid of that, how particularly it comes into play is on the periodic table that I have conveniently pulled up here in the back. <coughs> Remember when I said that on each particular number, you have a mass that's right here. This mass, 1.008, has two units associated with it. The two units are A m u and the other one is grams per mole <coughs> okay so an amu is a unit of measure that is incredibly small so if you take one atom of hydrogen it weighs one atomic mass unit Okay, 1.008 atomic mass units. That number, as we had said before, you get from here. So 1.008 atomic mass units. But in reality, like I said, you can't count 
one hydrogen molecule, or one hydrogen atom, I'm sorry, when you're in a chemistry or a biology lab. It's just not feasible. So what we do is we say, okay, one mole of hydrogen weighs 1.008 grams. So hydrogen's molecular mass is 1.008 grams per mole. It's kind of simple the way it sits out just like that. It's just that basic. <coughs> I do the same thing for oxygen. Oxygen over here has a molecular mass of 15.999, which means that one mole of oxygen weighs 15.999 grams. The molecular mass of oxygen is 15.999 grams per mole. That means that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms, you stuff them together, they weigh 15.999 grams. So how this is particularly important is when we get into when we get into this particular urine physiology lab, you're given a particular quantity and you have to figure out how many moles that is because later we're going to we're going to take moles and we're going to figure out osmoles. So it's all really important that it all kind of works together. And I just want to go through and do four or five examples. And before I do the examples, one common question that I get from people is do I need to go out and buy a mystical and magical scientific calculator for this? Well, I'm sure it'll be helpful, you know, when you get into the upper level stuff where you're doing a lot more complex, you know, especially when because if you're in anatomy and physiology, eventually you're going to have to take calculus anyway. And I, while I know that some colleges don't use calculators in, cal in calculus, most colleges do. But for the purposes of this particular math, I can use something as simple as not a line that I just drew, but something as simple as an on-screen keyboard, or as an on-screen calculator, as you can see right here. And just while we're here, I'm going to put my on-screen calculator right here in the center of the screen, because if you remember from the last lecture, we're not going to be using any of the elements that are present in the center of the periodic table right here. So I can block those off. It's not going to hurt anything. Everything's going to be okay. We're cool? You're cool? All right, we're all cool. So as I go back, let's say I want to figure out what is the molecular mass of one mole of water? That means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. But I haven't talked about what to do if you have more than one element combined. So first thing you have to do is write out the molecular formula for water. The molecular, or the molecular formula for water is H2O. Now, what I'm, the steps I'm going to show you, it gets, it gets a little bit more complicated than what you need to do with water, but you'll get the idea as we get into a couple more complicated examples. So you need to write out this particular table. The table is the element, the number of them, the mass per each, and the total mass. How this particular how this is how this kind of works is you draw it all out. Hopefully yours will be neater than mine because no one has ever no one has ever accused me of having handwriting that is too neat. Also, one thing you're going to notice and the physics people and the chemistry people choke when they hear this. I don't care if you round. For example, hydrogen, the atomic mass, as you can see, or right over here, is 1.008. One is close enough for me. It's cool. Oxygen, 15.999. We're all friends. Let's call it 16. Fluorine, 18.998. Meh, it's 19. Carbon, 12.011. Meh, it's 12. Okay? It just saves you some time in the long run it's okay. If you want to be overly precise, it's fine. But keep in mind that if you round it, if you put specific digits to the, let's say the third decimal place, I check it to the third decimal place. If you put whole numbers, I check it to the whole number. <coughs> so is it really an area that you want to 
push that envelope. It's like when you're staying up late when you're not supposed to. When you were a kid, you try to be as quiet as possible after bedtime. This is one of those same situations. So, with H2O, the element you have, you have hydrogen, and then you have oxygen. How many hydrogens do we have? Well, we have two. How many oxygens do we have? Well, we only have one. What is the mass for one hydrogen? It's one atomic mass unit, or one gram per mole. What is the mass for each oxygen? It is 16. So what is 2 times 1? Last I checked it was 2. What is 1 times 16? Last I checked it is 16. So then you add these together. What is 16 plus 2? 18. So 1 mole of water is 18 grams. Or that also, that, that the another way of writing that is water, H2O, is 18 grams per mole. Easy enough? Everybody's happy? Cool. We're going to go straight in and do a longer example. We can do the molecular mass of glucose. Glucose has three different things in it, and there's more than one of each. So let's get rid of all this pen. Oh, it's all gone. All our work's gone. All is lost. So let's go to glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6. So let's do our same table. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. How many carbons do we have? We have six of them. How many hydrogens do we have? We have 12 of them. Let me make this a little easier to read. How many oxygens do we have? We have six of them. So this is, how many of them do we have? So this is the number, this is the mass per, this is the total. When you get into water, like when you're doing this for water, this gets a little redundant. For glucose, it's even kind of borderline redundant. But whenever you get into the longer organic molecules, that just you know for the purposes of exams, your professors will often want you to do. Um, it's kind of you know sometimes you might want to draw it out just in, if you have time. It keeps the mass it keeps the math easy. So the mass for each carbon we had said is 12. The mass for each hydrogen we had said is one. The mass for each oxygen, we have six of them, we had said it was 16. So we can go up here. Ah, that was very unfortunate. Let's see if we can... We can't undo it. So, bummer, we have to do it again. So that's... That was secret, secretly my master plan. I just wanted to see if you could draw this whole thing out again. Or maybe this was my own master plan to get myself to work on my penmanship. So we have, but it's clearly not working. Mass per for carbon is 12, oxygen, hydrogen is 1, oxygen is 16. So now I'm going to, okay, now we have the right thing. So carbon, 6 times 12. The mass of the carbon, 72 grams per mole. For the oxygen, 6 times 16, 96. I think that actually looks like a 9. That would be helpful. And then 12 times 1 for hydrogen. We take all these. 72 plus 12 plus 96 equals 180. So C6 H12O6 is... 180 
grams per mole. <coughs> I knew this one specifically because 180 grams per mole for glucose, it, you do it so incredibly common and it's done all the time so that's one of the ones that you just kind of want to remember also the water was the first one that I did 18 grams per mole you are just kinda gonna want to remember it you do it enough you do it all the time so it just saves you a lot of stress let me get rid of all this pen and we'll do one more example on this particular video and then I'll end this one and then we'll begin the next one with molarity so clear out then and then while we're here we can clear our calculator and then we will do let's do magnesium oxide so I'll write this out as a question so magnesium and let's do it let's do a harder one let's do magnesium and chlorine bind bond okay what is the molecular mass. So the first thing you have to understand is when they bond, what are they going to bond and form? If you said MgO, or I'm sorry, that is entirely not correct. If you said MgCl, you would be wrong. The reason you would be wrong is because magnesium has a plus two charge. Has a plus two charge, and chlorine has a minus one charge, which means that you would have to have MgCl2. So when you have magnesium chloride, it is MgCl2. I hope everybody's happy with that. If you're not, you know, do whatever you have to do to get happy with that, but it is MgCl2. So, now we'll take MgCl2 and we'll figure out what the molecular mass is. Let me get rid of our writing just so we have a little bit of space. So, we're going with MgCl2. <coughs> and if you have a question as to why it's MgCl2, if you go back and look at the video immediately preceding this one, we talk about, we give several examples of why these things bond together and exactly what they do. Okay, so MgCl2, look at the mass. We can draw out our little table. So element, element and number, mass per, and the total. So the element, we have Mg, and we have another one, Cl. I missed a day when it was at, you know, the drawing straight lines. It'll entirely be okay. And that's an extra line. So the number we have for, for magnesium, we have one of them, we have two chlorine. What's the mass per? For magnesium, it is, you know, this is 24. For chlorine, 35. So what is 24 times 1? That's what's 35 times 2? 70. So 70 plus 24, point, uh, 24 grams per mole. That is 94 grams per mole. So what this translates to is when magnesium bonds with chlorine, it produces MgCl2 or magnesium chloride. When it produces MgCl2, the MgCl2 that's produced has a mass of 94 grams per mole. Hope this makes sense. We'll continue on in just a few minutes, and I hope you're, you know, hope it's helpful so far. Thank you.